What up? It's Jimmy. This is a clip from our big Super Bowl 55 show starring Rob Bebenek, the whale capper, and the big ragu. To check out the entire show, just hit the link from the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on odds.com. We move on to totals. We move on to totals next. And I can't wait to hear your guys' breakdowns. This was another situation that when I saw the 56 and a half, I wanted to bet it on the under, but I hesitated. And for good reason, these two offenses are very strong. Let's break this down quickly. During the regular season, the Chiefs were tied for sixth in the league, gaining 7.9 yards per pass attempt. Second in the league with 69 completions for 20 plus yards. Just tied for 16th in the league with eight completions over 40 plus yards. The Buccaneers' pass defense has been vulnerable this year, 21st in the league. They allowed 3,945 yards. They were tied for 22nd, allowing 29 TDs. They did get 15 picks, which was tied for 7th. They were 10th in the league, allowing 46 passes of 20-plus. They were a little better in the 40-plus category. They allowed a passer rating of 94.3 and 48 sacks. We know what they can do on the rush defense side of things. The Chiefs were 16th in the league rushing, tied for 11th, averaging 4.5 yards per carry. Looking back at that, I think those are bad numbers considering you have to be in a pass defense so often against the Chiefs. 13 rush TDs tied them for 22nd, 11 rushes of 20 plus. They were tied for last in the league with the Chargers and the Dolphins with zero rushes of 40 plus. And we know what this Buccaneer rush defense can do. They allowed a league best 1,289 yards, 3.6 yards per carry. They allowed a league low 10 TDs. We're tied for second in the line, just four carries over 20 yards and one carry over 40 yards, which means that the Chiefs are likely going to have to move the ball through the air, and that will put points on the board and keep the clock stopped. Brady completed 65.7% of his passes, 40 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, passer rating of 102.2. In the playoffs, it hasn't been as good. 55%, seven touchdowns, three interceptions, 90.8 rating. And it's the opposite for Mahomes. His numbers have improved in the playoffs. Brady, third in the league, 67 passes plus 20 yards, fourth in the league with 12 passes plus 40 yards. We often question whether he could throw the deep ball. He certainly was able to this year. And the Chiefs' pass defense, 14th in pass yards allowed, tied for 20th, allowing 29 pass TDs. They were 10th, allowing a passer rating of 89.4 and not nearly the same sort of pass rush, just 32 sacks. The Buccaneers, 28th in the league in rushing. They were tied for 24th, averaging 4.1 yards per carry, nine rushes over 20 yards, tied for eighth, allowing – the Chiefs' defense was tied for eighth, allowing rushes for over 20 yards. The way I see this with this, both running games that aren't going to be able to move the ball much, it has kept me from betting the under that I so want to bet. But let's pass it around to the experts and see what moves should be made. We will start with the big ragu. We're talking totals. Yeah. Initially, I was looking at some quarter totals, you know, first quarter, second quarter, breaking the quarters down. Now, notoriously, for Kansas City's sake, we always know, not always, but they have had a history of starting slow early on, letting other teams um, jump out in front. And, and a big, believe it or not, you can look back at the coin toss for them. A lot, most of the times, even if they win the coin toss, they'll defer and give the ball to the other team. <clears throat> so um, my first thought was, and I know, I know it's not a, it's not a total, but I was looking at taking. Um, Tampa Bay plus a half in the first quarter, but but that kind of tied into the uh, to the under. So I was going to leave the first quarter alone totally, as far as the number goes, because you know you, you always have the scripted plays. You're going to see how it's going to work out, and and I don't even know what the fir- what is the first quarter total. Do you have that handy? Uh, yeah, uh, ten. ten points. Yeah, okay. And I think that's on par with what the teams have been averaging, like just a little better than five points over the past you know three games in the first quarter. But the second quarter, I think it's going to be a monster quarter. And this is a quarter that I'm looking, you know, Kansas City's 
going to jump out of the gates. They're going to get their points. It's probably going to be their biggest quarter of the game is the way I cap it out. I think uh, Tampa is going to score at least 10 to 12 points in in this in the second quarter. I think Kansas City is going to outscore them probably maybe like uh, 17 points, 14, 17 points. So I'm looking for a 20-plus point uh, second quarter. You know, and that, that could put the game – that could put the game over for the first half or, you know, depending on whether they come up with a couple field goals. I think the first half, what's the first half total in the game? I'm going to pull that up right now. And by the way, with the first quarters, you can get tens and you can get 10 and a halves. Yeah. Uh, you know, juiced accordingly. The first half right now we have 27 and a half. Yeah. That's a pretty good sizable number there. 27 and a half. So if you get, if, if you get 20 and let's say seven, <laughs> you know, you're looking at 27. Basically, you lose by the hook if, if it goes that way. But I, I feel more, I feel safe, a little safer taking the second quarter over the points. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 17. That's what I got down at initially, minus 115. I don't know what you can get me right now. Well, I will line shop for you for a second quarter over. I that bet makes a ton of sense. To me, very interesting breakdown. Uh, I will line shop while we hear from the whale capper. Whale capper totals. So I am with you, Jimmy, and I think Regu in general. We kind of all sort of see this the same way. This is a high. This is a big number. This is a big number for you know for a lot of reasons. These two, two defenses are a little underrated by the market. Um, there are some question marks in terms of how each team is really going to be able to score so explosively 56. I mean that, you know, you're going to need each team to, you know, threaten 30 here to make this happen. Um, the problem is if Tampa Bay does get out to a lead, then the live total might as well be infinity because t- Kansas city scores so fast when they're behind that the game just explodes. And I, you know, there I was on the under in Houston KC last year in the playoffs. And I remember even before the game saying, like, the only thing I'm a little concerned about is if like Houston gets out to like a big lead, then I'm screwed. And sure enough, Houston went out to a 24 nothing lead and the game finished with like 80 points. Um, and that's kind of what you get when you put. You know, put you know the Chiefs' backs against the wall when you really when you threaten Mahomes. You know, in the playoffs, you know he really turns it up, uh, and that's a game state that I don't think you can really n- totally rule out because of the way that this is set up. You know, likelihood that the Chiefs defer if they win the coin toss, Bucks get the ball first. They got the advantage in the trenches. They're probably going to have some early success. You know, so I, I think I, I'm looking uh, at other ways to attack this. Um, I think uh, Tampa Bay, I, I played uh, Tampa Bay first quarter over six and a half points. Um, I can see a clean drive out of the gate for these guys uh, with the two weeks to prepare and the weapons they have on offense and getting the ball first likely. Uh, that probably gives them two cracks in the first quarter to score a touchdown. Um, and so over six and a half is in my queue for Tampa Bay points in the first quarter. Uh, similarly, I like, uh, you know, from a, just from a straight scoring standpoint, um, I like the you know KC, I think they're going to be kicking some field goals early in this one. Uh, you know, on the real high leverage downs, we have not seen them be clean at all in the red zone this season. It has been a struggle for them to get it in, to punch it in when they're down there. You know, people look at how much they're scoring and think, oh well, this team must be efficient in the red zone. Most of their scoring comes from outside the red zone, <laughs> wildly. And when they're in there, they struggle. They kick a lot of field goals. I think there is you know the likelihood that you could have some. You know, some sacks flip things early in terms of red zone opportunities as, you know, as Todd Bowles dials up the blitz because he's, you know, he's not afraid of giving up a 50 yard pass if they're already at the 20. Uh, You know, so now we can get a little bit more aggressive with our blitz. We can shut you down on third down. uh, And now you tried out the field goal unit. I think Casey kicks the first field goal is a prop that I like. Uh, Tampa Bay scores the first touchdown is a prop that I like. Um, Casey in general field goals over is a prop that I like. Um, Butker more field goals and more points scored than suck up is a, is a bettable number in my opinion. Cause these are all lined like, like, ah, eh, it's 50, 50, you know, or, ah, eh, you know, the chiefs will score three more points over the course of the game. You know, it's not really lined, uh, in the same way that reflects Casey's offense in the red zone is not great. And, uh, Casey's defense in the red zone is not very good either. 
Uh, they give up loads of touchdowns when you know opposing teams get inside the 20 yard line. So um, I do think it, it sets up for Tampa Bay to score some points in the first half here, get a little bit of a lead. And at that point, you might see the top get ripped off this thing. Now, the flip side is true as well. If Kansas City looks clean early and they've got a lead, they can put away, you know, they they can, you know, wipe this, you know, wipe a whole quarter out with one or two drives, you know, like they absolutely have the tools to do it. Uh, you know, they can stretch it out. They're tough to get off the field on third down because of the way Mahomes scrambles. Um, so it's, it's almost like uh, you have to see how the first quarter plays out. Tampa Bay has a lead live over is too low. Uh, Kansas city has a lead and the, the, it's a, it's a spot for a live under. Yeah, that makes absolute perfect sense. Uh, I took a lot of unders in chiefs games this year and I would always pray that they were ahead. Yes, same. <laughs> same. Eight minute drives, yeah. nine minute drives, and you know, and, and it's possible in this game. And, and I like what both you and Ragu said, but it's possible in this game that the first quarter are is the first twelve or thirteen minutes is just one drive each. That's possible. Yeah. Very interesting. Is there anything that you want to just for me tweeting out show picks? in the totals situation is there anything that you want me to make as an official show pick yeah tampa bay first quarter over six and a half i got it at plus 100 i think it's still probably pretty close to that tampa i don't think bay it's going up first quarter over six and a half plus 100 and and ragu i can't and i'm gonna keep looking but at this point i can't find just a second quarter total for whatever reason i have found some very interesting spot like second quarter highest scoring quarter and that's at plus 150. So I'm going to keep looking and see if I can get you just a number at this point. But I'm, and I'm going to keep looking. We're going to hear what Bebinex breakdown here is for I the total. I, uh, I saw one. I'll shoot you a message, Jimmy. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Bebzy, let's go totals, my friend. Uh, well, I'm I'm pretty relieved to hear that I'm pretty much lockstep with uh, with Whale and Ragu. Both uh, both looks, I think, real sharp. I'll, I'll touch on what Whale said first. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. If uh, if Tampa gets up early, the over is very much in play again because we we've seen just how quickly this Tampa team can score or this uh, Chiefs team can score. We saw it against the Niners last year. We saw it against the Titans. Uh, we see it time and again. They get behind and then they just bang, light up two touchdowns in a heartbeat. So I want the under. I feel like, and this is more of a gut thing, I, I really believe, uh, as, as Drew said, both of these defenses – are fairly underrated and this is the time of year like obviously super bowl where where defenses step up and make huge plays uh now this tampa defense is very good not as good as the niners defense last year but still very good and look the the point total was nowhere near this last year so look and everything came in the fourth quarter basically um so i'm i'm staying off the the full game because of that concern, because I, I do believe if Tampa gets out early, then the score is going to go through the roof. Uh, but this is more to what Ragu said. Um, I, I believe, you know, he doesn't want to make the play. I do. I want to take the first quarter under 10 and a half. Um, and again, to echo, I think Drew said this, like both of these, teams could have one drive in the first quarter. And in the last three Super Bowls, I understand it's a different team, but in the last three Super Bowls that Tom Brady's played in, he has put up a total of three points in the first quarter. Uh, I think this game starts off very slow. I think there's a feeling out process. Uh, I think neither team is going to take a ton of risks out the gates. Again, both both offenses are capable of exploding. I just don't see it starting that way. So a first quarter, 10 and a half, I can see it being a three, nothing game. I can see it being a three, three game. I just don't see uh, two touchdowns being scored in the first quarter of this game. So a 10 and a half, I just, I don't know. It's a bit of a gut play here, but I like that look. Uh, and there's a, enough logic to back up my gut. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that. 
And that 10 and a half is varying prices and big differences. It's at minus 150 at Bet Rivers, but it's just minus 120 at Bet MGM. So, first quarter under 10 and a half, minus 120 at Bet MGM. And Whale has uh, hooked me up with that spot, Ragu. And it's very interesting here at FanDuel for you. Thank you, Whale. You can get that second quarter total over 17. At plus 106. Book it, Daniel. Let's do that. So perfect game state here. Tampa Bay gets the ball first, scores a touchdown. Chiefs get the ball second, kick the field goal. Tampa Bay's third drive bleeds into the second quarter, and they score a second touchdown, and then game on. 14-3, it turns into a shootout. I mean, I personally would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, your typical Kansas City fashion right there, right? Yep, pretty much. The breakdowns just make a ton of sense. Just make a ton of sense. And with all that being said, it does make me like the first half under 27 and a half more than I like the full game under 56 and a half because we could be seeing these, we could be needing fast scores in the second half. Well, what do you think of that first half under compared to the full game under? Is that high scoring second quarter scare you in that regard? Not really. No, I honestly, uh, because the look, and maybe I'm anchoring too much on what we saw in last year's Super Bowl, but the pass rush for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if it gets home, if it's disruptive, if it stops, you know, if it gets the the, the Chiefs off the field on third down, at, that's more likely to work in the first half than the second half because those big boys get tired. This is going to be a long game, and they don't have a ton of depth. They really just have the four, right? And I don't think they want to blitz. I think they want to get it, get get it done with the four, you know, those those main four guys, and they're great. Um, but at some point they're going to wear down. So I, I do think that you see a higher scoring second half than the first half, although that's obviously not a very contrarian opinion. That's pretty widely held. <laughs> just, just to touch on that too is uh, all year long, we've seen way less flags for holding. You know, that was a big complaint across the board last year. Um, obviously the uh, flags were put away in the Super Bowl last year, uh, a lot of holding, but I think it's going to be more of the same. I, I, I really believe the refs are going to be instructed to let a lot of holding happen because, the look, the world wants to see these two quarterbacks throw the ball. So I think you're going to see a lot of hold. Like I, I promise you come Monday the narrative will be a ton of pictures on Twitter, like stills of blatant holds that weren't called. Call on every play if they want. They could, yeah, but I, I just in general holding calls way down this year and down even further in the playoffs. Well, I will make official here for just show purposes. I do think that money's going to start coming in on the over with the weather change and the excitement over betting and over with a group of people, even though the groups are going to be five and under. I'm going to take a first half. Under 27 and a half, minus 107. That's available at Bet Rivers. 